In this video, I'll be doing the maths question you see on the screen here from paper two of the 2024 Maths Leave Insert exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the playlist in the comments below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, you're not in a classroom here, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch a half speed or watch a 2x speed. If you do find these videos useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like or subscribe, but especially I'd appreciate you sharing it with a friend doing the Leave Insert or doing it next year. Okay, question five starts off by giving you the equation of a circle and simply asking you to write down the center and the radius of the circle. This uh, should be a fairly straightforward um, question. I'm gonna make it a little more difficult by showing you uh, a slightly different way to do it, but probably the same. I'll show you the fast and easy way first though. Uh, your formula table does have an equation of a line that looks like this. You should know how to use it. Uh, x squared plus y squared plus two gx plus two fy plus c equals zero. And it tells you in the book that when an equation looks like this, the center is simply minus g and uh, minus f and the radius is equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c okay from that you should be able to just um, well just write down the center because the center is half of whatever's here and then a minus half of four and then a minus so the center is minus two half of this and a minus. So minus, minus, that becomes a three. So the center is minus two, three. Just straight off from this. Uh, put the numbers in here, and C is just five, and we should find R. Should be quite straightforward. I'm not gonna even write the answer there, because I'm gonna do it a little longer way, but the, my longer way will explain where all this came from. So I think it's, it's worthwhile. Um, I think people are more happy with the equation of a line, the, the equation of a circle that looks like this. Uh, x minus something squared plus uh, y, well minus or plus, sorry, squared equals uh, r squared. Um, and I can turn that into this, because we have an x squared and a 4x here. What, must, what number has to go here to make, well x squared is x squared, what number has to go here to make this 4x? And that would have to be a plus two. And then we can think what number has to go here to make the minus six? And that would have to be a minus three. Because remember, two times x and an x times two would make four x's. And would make a minus six y's here. And would equal, let's see, move this five over, we get a minus five. There's one problem here. Two squared, so x squared makes, uh, makes x squared. Uh, 2 times x, x times 2, that made 4x. 2 times 2, 4. There's no 4 up here, num just number 4. So I've invented a whole new number here, and that, you can't do that without balancing it somewhere else. So if I invented a 4 on the left, I'd better invent it on the right. Again, a 9 will appear on the left, I'd better even it out by putting a 9 on the right. And now, once the equation's like this, I think students are happier to say the centre's minus 2, plus three. The same answer we would have got here, um, I think. Yeah, we would have got there. And then on the on this side, it equals becomes, uh, let's see, 13 minus five, that's eight. So I think students are happy to say or is equal square root of eight. Although we wouldn't leave our answer square root of eight. Um, it's a great example in, later in this question, why? Um, because if the calculator will tell you this, but you can just divide numbers into this until you get to the biggest square number, which in this case is four. Square root of four, square root of two, that equals two square root two. Anyway, that's all. That's Again, the calculator will go from there to there, no problem. Um, but I want you to point out that these are the same answers, because especially this one here, square root of this, which is square root of g squared, g squared, h, uh, sorry, f squared, that's these two, minus the C, minus the C. That's the same thing. I, I just wanted to point that out, but still, if you wanna do this in just a few seconds, use that formula perfectly well. There's your answers, by the way, yeah. Center and radius. 
Okay, in A part two, they add an extra circle into it, it's called C, and they draw us a picture here. Uh, S, the first one, is this small circle. This new circle, C, is a larger one. And they, they simply ask to show us that these circles touch internally. Now just, uh, when they say touch, they mean uh, not this. That's not touching, that's overlapping. So touch uh, means just one, just one intersection right there. Okay, so there's uh, there's only one only one way to do this that I can think of that's nice and clean. Um, I, 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 I can think of a couple of other ways that I'll, I'll say at the end, but they're, they're messes. They, I, I, wouldn't, I won't show you them in full because, well, I haven't even done it myself on the page. Um, one shouldn't be too bad, but anyway, I'll show you the nice clean way to do this. How do we prove that these touch internally? It's actually quite simple. It's all about the radius. Most circles come down to radius. Um, usually it's one radius equals another radius. Not in this case though. So it's, they're saying this radius here, um, and then this big radius here. I'll write it, draw it again there. Uh, let's put some of these in actually, or C. So that's uh, the big radius. Goes from the center all the way to the outside. That should equal the little radius, um, or S, plus this here. And that's the distance between the two center points. I'll just call it D for now. The distance between this center point, and well, we can just write this center point down, two minus one. The distance between these two points. Um, and we can also put the radius in. Uh, the radius is square root of 72. And if we put that in, in a calculator, or we do, uh, do the sums ourselves, we should get six square root two. Okay, so that's uh, the information of the second one. Oh, so all we have to do is this, this little sum here, and this would be um, or C, what's or C? The, the, the second one here. Six square root two equals two square root two plus, plus some unknown. So now we just have to find D. Let's do that over here. D is the distance between two points these two points, um, and that's uh, the distance between two and minus two is four. Well, let, let me do it slowly. Two minus minus two squared uh, plus uh, minus one minus three squared, and the square root of all that. That's um, four, four squared, 16. Uh, that's minus four squared, which again is 16 square root of that, that's equal square root of 32. But again, don't leave your answer like that. Um, that can be that can be shrunk down to, let's see, 16 times two, yeah, so four square root of two. So this, this thing we need to prove uh, simply boils down to six square root of two, does it equal two square root of two plus four square root of two? I think a square root of two is just an X or something. Is 6x equal to 2x plus 4x? Yeah, it's just, that's self-evident that 6 square root of 2, 6 square root, again, your calculator will put this together and tell you it's that as well. So yes, the, this does equal, therefore, this touches just perfectly, just once. It's the exact same length. Um, and that's the answer to A part two. Oh yeah, other ways to do that. Um, well, the first way, when I think uh, touches just once, I think of a, a quadratic that only has one answer, not two answers or not zero answers, um, only one answer. So I thought, how would you get a quadratic here? If you try and equate these two, uh, but the x's, the squares cancel out. So I think if you get um, x equals, so put this over, x would equal like two plus or minus the square root of, of this mess, and then fill that in here. I maybe I think you could tease out a quadratic, but I'm not even that sure. I think it might cancel out and and uh, leave you uh, in trouble anyway. So that'd be one way, other way to do it. But again, I wouldn't do that. Um, uh, uh, another way, again, I wouldn't do. But just as a suggestion, uh, you could find this point uh, by finding this line between these two points. Uh, these two points, equation that line, find the interception with, with um, either circle, 
you find one of them. I don't, yeah, I don't think that would prove your answer. But once you find this point, you could uh, differentiate both of these with respect to that point. And uh, if you get the same slope of both of them, for me, that would prove the answer. I, again, that's just, uh, this, these are just ideas. Sometimes you might be stuck in the exam and have to do one of these weird ideas. In this case, this was the easy way. So hopefully stick with that. Anyway, let me clean that off and we'll do part B. In part B, they give us uh, this drawing here with these points and basically ask us to find the equation of this circle. Now it's quite common to give you a circle with uh, points, usually three points on the circle and ask us to find the equation of the circle. Um, and the method to do that way, you could do this way as well. That's one of the ways. There's a, there's a few tricks, a um, few other ways. Actually, that, that's the first one I will show, I suppose. So I'll, I'll answer this question two, maybe three times. At least I'll outline it. So how I would answer this question if I had three points on it, ju just to explain. I'd use the equation um, x squared plus y squared. Oh, let me just double check, I remember it. Uh, plus two gx uh, plus two fy uh, plus c equals zero. The equation, now you can use the other equation of a circle as well. This one. So it works out a little easier. Um, so I use this equation and point out that 710 fits into this. If I put 7 in for x, 10 in for y, this is a valid equation. If I put 12, 8 in, it's a valid equation. And there's five unknowns here, counting x and y, but remember, x and y will disappear because I know numbers for it. So we'll be left with three unknowns, g, f, and c. And that's why we usually need three points to answer this. But, um, but we have an extra piece of information here. We know nine zero, we know the center is on this line here. So we in fact know half of the answer of the center. Um, that's nine something, um, K we'll put in, nine uh, K. Um, yeah, I guess I could put in minus F either, actually. Minus F probably makes more sense. Uh, minus F. Because we know the center of a circle is minus G. So minus G equals the X part of the center. Minus F equals whatever's here, which is why I put minus F in. So when I said we had three unknowns, G, F, and C, well, I've just suddenly found one of them, g equals minus nine. So now I only have two unknowns, and I have two pieces of information. So I have two uh, points here. So if I put them in, seven, seven in for there, 49, 10 in for here, 100, um, seven in here, and minus nine in here, which, uh, what's that? Um, Seven minus nines are minus 63 times two is minus 126. I have the final answer written down, so I'll double check when we get there. Uh, put 10 in here, we get 20 F plus C equals zero. If we clean all that up, that's probably what I've wrote down here. Yeah, I have 20, uh, I have 20 F plus C equals minus 23. And that looks about right, minus 26 from this. Um, yeah, and then uh, minus 26 uh, plus 23 over here becomes a minus 23. Okay, so putting this point in here will get this equation. Do the same thing, I won't bother doing it, but put 12, eight into this, into this here, and you will get out, let's see, 16 F, plus C equals eight. This is now a simultaneous equation, just two with two unknowns. You'd usually get three unknowns. A simultaneous equation with two unknowns, you just go ahead and solve it. You'll find out the center um, and the radius, or actually you, you won't even need to find the center and the radius, you just fill the numbers back in here because they asked for the equation. And that's one way to do it. I won't finish it because I'll, I'll solve it a different way anyway. Um, another way, what's my other ways? Yeah, okay, there's another one. Um, distance, I just thought of the third one now, okay. Uh, distance though, the second one. The distance between these two and these two are the same. They're, they're both radius, radii, they're both radii. 
So their distance should be the same. So that means the distance between these two, uh, that's the distance between seven and nine, that's uh, two squared, four. And the distance between 10 and minus f um, is 10 plus f squared. That should equal um, the distance between here and here, which is uh, nine, square root of nine plus eight plus f uh, squared. Uh, equate these, the square roots um, cancel each other. Uh, let's see, we'd get f squares, they cancel each other as well. We'd be left with 20f on this side, 16f on this side, that'd be 4f on this side. Let's see, all the numbers, we'd be left with uh, 9, 64, that's uh, 73. Take away a hundred and take away another four. Sixty-nine. I think thirty-one. No, that's not right. I have the number here somewhere, so I'll just go ahead. Oh, it is thirty-one. Okay. Uh, minus. Oh no, thirty-one plus thirty-one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that is what I got. Um, and equate that. You'll get f is equal. Sorry, minus thirty-one. Yes, because. That was, that was 100 and that was 60. Yeah, okay, minus 31, I see now. So F equals uh, minus 31 over four. So the center is minus this. So th there's the center. We would have also found that over here, by the way. Uh, the center is nine, uh, 31 over four. Because remember, it's minus F and I found F here. Um, the radius then, just find the distance between these two points or the distance between these two points. Actually, you know what? I don't think I've broke down the distance anywhere. The radius anywhere, I mean. I, I just looked it up there. Uh, it's equal square root of 145 over 16. Um, again, you put that into an equation of a, of a circle. I'll, I'll write that now in a moment. The, well, I'll write the two answers you would get. And uh, the third way, the third quite common way, I guess, to do it, would be to sort of think of it as a construction, think of it as a drawing. This is a chord between these two. If you get the middle point, let me draw that in. If you get the middle point of these two and get the slope of this and invert it to get the equation of this line here, it should go through the center point. And you know um, part of the center point is already nine. So it should be uh, doing this way. Once you get that line, it should be straightforward to find um, 31 over, over four as that point. Uh, once you have that point, again, get the distance to outside here. Uh, if you complete it out to uh, either of those ways, or any of those ways, uh, you would have found one of these equations. Either is, either is correct, they're both the same. Um, I'll just correct, uh, I wrote 144 there. I think I said 145. But anyway, I wrote the wrong number. Um, either of these are fine. Um, the first method probably would have found this quite quickly. The distance method, a bit messier, but would have, you probably would have ended up with this equation. And uh, I guess the line one, yeah, you probably would have ended up with the second one here again. And you know what? Would it be in a circle? There's probably other ways to do it. If, if you know other ways, let me know. Um, or if you have any questions, more importantly, if you have any questions or see any mistakes I made, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.